Hello and welcome to this video. Today we have a great privilege to have Don Wook onto the channel to talk about life as a med student at Hull York Med School. Don Wook is a second year student at Hull York Med School and it's a great opportunity to have him onto the channel to teach you and to share what it's like studying at such a good university. Don Wook, how are you? Doing all right, Josh. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Let's get started off with some quick fire questions just so that the audience can know a bit more about you and a broader overview of life at med school. Where did you come from? I came from South Korea. Brilliant. So do you find Hull York med school life tiring? Um, yes, yes. It's extremely tiring, but it's worth it. So um, I'd take that trade off any day. Yes. Do you have time to do ECAs at Hull York? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, med school really does encourage people to have extracurriculars. How many ECAs do you do? I just do um, one so far. Do you find it difficult to settle into university? No. Impressive. When do you when do you normally go to bed? I normally go to sleep at 10 30 p.m and when do you normally very wake late. up um uh i usually wake up around 7 a.m hmm. that's good hours sleep. i actually wake up sooner <laughs> yeah what are three words to describe uni um tiring fun um rewarding that's a brilliant overview of, of, of your life at Hull York so far. Perhaps let's get started off with telling us a bit more about why you chose to apply to, to Hull York and overseas because you've come from, of course, um, Asia. Well, the UK is one of the only places that I was really considering um, that does medicine as an undergraduate course, because obviously in the US, medicine is only done as a postgraduate course so immediately that was sort of uh, intriguing and I think medicine in the UK just has a lot more um, interactivity and I was looking at Holyoke York Med School as one of my premier choices because we go on uh, placements starting like the second or third week of our first year and I'm really someone who likes to you know implement things into the real world and to see how things work um, in the real world so therefore it was really um, sort of one of the better choices for me. Brilliant so perhaps developing on that as an international student how did you find it transitioning into uni because some people say it's very difficult but from your quick fire question it's quite clear that you found it quite easy. Well I'd actually lived in the UK 10 years for 10 years of my life from like ages 2 to te uh, 2 to 12 and I'd also live for like 3 months in the US uh, all by myself just over the summer I think between years 10 and 11 so I did have a lot of experience sort of um, with the UK and with um, university life even though it was pseudo university life uh, that I experienced at the um, summer uh, so, so summer camp in the US um, but I found those experiences to be very enjoyable and I feel like I just sort of carried on doing sort of the same things as I settled into uni and that just helped me settle in really well I know um, a lot of people that didn't settle settle in well sort of you know try to just sort of treat it as an as an extension of of high school which it to a certain extent it is, but it really isn't. Like you have to be a lot more independent and you have to manage freedom uh, really well. And you have to manage your time well. And I had a lot of experiences with that um, already. And I had a lot of experiences failing with that already, more importantly. And I think those really did help me sort of sell into uni really quickly. Mm, that's a very good um, tips about how you can settle into university easier. Perhaps um, when you got to university, can you tell us about three positive things that surprised you, which you weren't expecting when you got to New York? 
Um, everyone's, uh, this might just be with medical school students because they are, you know, sort of um, the brightest of the bunch, but everyone's extremely um, sort of kind, welcoming. You know, every, everyone wants to share a conversation and, and nobody sort of, you know, is, you know, mean from the start everyone wants to be accommodating of each other and you also have to think you're all in the same position or most of the people there are in the same position first time at uni um they're experiencing all of this for the first time so it's just about making friends and sort of going through that process together rather than sort of being like i have to you know stick to how i did things in high school now nah, because that because that's uh, excuse me because that's not going to work it's about sort of meeting new people interacting with them finding who you fit with and just get just doing activities extracurriculars that you enjoy hmm. that's a very um, interesting idea and a, a very good presentation of what surprised you perhaps um, on the flip side of things what what were some negative things which surprised you when you got to um med school um the workload the workload is immense and you really really have to stay on top of things um and since you're at uni you have nobody sort of looking over your shoulder saying well you have to do your homework or you have to submit you know this question paper by tuesday period six or whatever um you have to cook for yourself. You have to clean your room by yourself. You have to choose what to wear all by yourself. You have to organize. You, you just have to do everything by your, by yourself, really. Um, and so it's really important that you manage your time well. Um, a lot of people struggle, including myself, with the basically almost endless freedom that you have. And sort of slack off work a bit and I think not doing that is so important everyone does it it's almost inevitable that you will do it that you will just slack off for like I don't know month at a time but it's just so important that you um try to stay on top of things and just remain on track hmm. that's a very good presentation of workload and, and I'm sure we're going to delve into more things about that workload in a bit now carrying on Let's talk a bit more about your course. So if someone is applying to med school, what, what are kind of the structure of the course? How is that formulated? In so med school or medicine in the UK is a five-year course. And there are basically two types of universities. There are what are called PBL unis uh, and lecture-based universities. So PBL, also known as problem-based learning, is where you sort of sit around or sit in a classroom with a group of like 10, 10 other or nine, 10 other people, and you discuss a certain case and the entire course is sort of structured around that. Obviously, there are lectures, you know, it's not just going to be lecture free. There are lectures, but it's more like workshop, um, case by case, uh, like a case basis, like a problem solving sort of setting compared to a lecture based uni which is just like sit down, take notes, you're, you'll be examined on it. Um, Holy York Med School is a PBL um, uh, sort of teaching curriculum. And I think that really does help lighten the workload and sort of get people more interested in what we're learning about rather than just sit here in a room of like 300 people and just take notes. We're able to have a much closer connection to our tutors uh, who are all doctors, GPs, uh, personnel like that. And so we can ask personal questions about their job. We can ask all these different things. And it's just so nice having a PBL based course like that. Hmm. That's a very good um, presentation of of what your course is like and what people can expect. Perhaps let's delve into that that kind of structure a bit more. Can you tell us a bit more about what um, your normal day in your life looks like? You'd, you'd want to wake up early. 
um, a lot of people don't, of course. But um, you'd want to get, you know, sort of your work done at various stages throughout the day. There is too much work for you to say, I'm going to complete all of this by lunchtime because you will end up going to sleep without having eaten lunch. So you want to sort of spread out all your activities throughout the day. You don't want to just clump everything um, together at once, even though I am, I am a culprit of doing that. Um, you definitely want to eat enough food, enough good food. Um, that's going to give you enough energy to actually work. I've seen so many people just like skip lunch or skip breakfast and just not function properly and not get the most out of their lessons and their lectures and stuff like that. Um, so what I would do, so I usually wake up at around 6.30 in the morning. Um, I would immediately sort of wake up and eat breakfast and I'd want to be sitting at my desk at around 7.15. Um, usually you might have some classes. I, I have classes. I personally have classes uh, in the morning. I'm part of the morning group. So, you know, I'll need to be in by nine through about until 12.30. I'll do PBL, which is where we look at two cases, discuss the medical implications, discuss the ethical implications, and then we might do our clinical skills where we practice our consultations, we practice our examinations like cardiac examinations, spinal examinations, low motor neuron exam examinations, stuff like that. Uh, the sort of skills that we're going to use on placement. And then I'd come home, you know, eat something substantial and then start debriefing. So all the notes I took for the day in the morning, I'd want to sort of consolidate and make sure that I understand and go from there. Hmm. That's a good um, presentation of what your day is like. Now, before we carry on on this interview and talk a bit more about some individual parts of your learning experience, I'd like to say if you enjoyed this video and want more information, make sure to like and subscribe to stay tuned to these interviews. We, we upload these interviews once a week about students at different universities, about how they got in and what life is like at those universities. Also, if you are considering applying to the US and the UK, do check out our two books, the UCAS Bible and the US College Guide. By checking out these two books, you get access to all the exclusive information, which has helped students like me, Don Wook, and other students get into some of the top universities around the US and the UK, like Ivy Leagues, Oxbridge, med schools, and more. So make sure you go check them out. Now, let's carry on this interview and talk a bit more about what it's like studying at at Hull York Med School. You've talked a bit more about you've talked a bit about workshops and and how that's been helpful. Can you talk, tell us a bit more about those workshops? What are they like? What are you doing in them? And also how that impacts your learning experience. So a PBL based course, uh, the week starts off by you just reading a case. Obviously, this case is you know online. You you can look at it. It's it's not usually not a real case. And it sort of goes something like, all right, this is, you know, a certain person's name, how old they are, you know, where they live, uh, who they live with. Uh, these are the sort of symptoms they present with. This is sort of a medical history. This is something she's concerned about. And it sort of lists those out in like a short to like a long letter uh, format. And what we do in a group is we'll discuss the sort of, medical sort of biology related to that and we'll also for some cases discuss the ethical implications of something um so i know well, right now we're doing the um i think we're doing the pregnancy unit or the pregnancy block and obviously there are a lot of ethical implications with that so this block is um a bit more ethics heavy than let's say the parasitic infection uh parasitic infections block but through these discussions, you're able to get out a lot of information. Now, you might be wondering how much you're actually able to get out workshops like those. Like, what if just nobody talks? Well, everyone in med school, it, to a certain extent, you know, is, is one of the better performing pupils at, you know, their said school. Um, and I've really never, never really been a part of a PBL group it's really quiet and just doesn't interact um, because then 
um, really what's the point of PBL. And I think just having that back and forth within uh, between people and discussing different ideas of different conditions and um, what different people's uh, differential diagnoses look like. I think doing things like that is just so much more fun than just sitting in a lecture hall for, with 300 people. And also you get a lot more out of it because there's a, a tutor there that's usually a GP or a, um, de de a, a trained doctor sitting in that we can just ask questions to. Um, so like, oh, well, you know, what would you do in this situation if it's an ethical issue or, or something like, oh, we're stuck on this part, like, could you help us with it? Or like, um, something like that. So it's just so um, more enjoyable than sitting in a lecture hall, I'd say. Hmm. That's a very good uh, presentation of what these workshops are like. And I mean, as someone at Oxford, I don't actually have any of these workshop-like scenarios. So it's quite interesting to see how your application and how that is applied to your uni life. Now, Developing upon that, you've raised a bit about, more about your placements. Can you tell me a bit more about what those placements were like? What do you learn from those experiences and how did that shape your university life so far? So placements are where we just um, sort of go to the hospital or go to a GP practice uh, in the UK and talk to patients. I think it has greatly accelerated everybody's ability to take a his take a medical history from a patient um, because it's one thing doing it you know with an actor just sitting there or just like practicing on it with your friend but when you're actually in hospital where they're actually in GP practice and this is an actual person with an actual um, uh, medical medical condition that you want to help them with well the stakes you know do go a lot higher and it's very very fulfilling to do um a lot of people don't want to go on placement really early on because they're scared they might mess up everyone at this level is scared they might mess up just going and doing it is just so helpful in your progress and improving your consultation skills because something that works in a very controlled setting uh with nice comfy chairs in a nice air conditioned room. Yeah, I mean, everybody can do that. But when you're in hospital, when it's, you know, humid, it's difficult to breathe, um, you with a patient, you, you might not be able to hear them properly. And they're actually there, that the patient's actually there. It's, it's a much different situation. And I feel like just going on placement, not only is extremely fun, it's extremely beneficial to just improving any sort of communication skills that you may have. Mm, that's a very good idea and a very good uh, presentation of placements and why they are important. I mean, I was talking to a good friend of mine, Parry, the other day, and he was telling me about how important internships are for a learning experience. And I'm sure the same could be said about med school as well. Now, perhaps moving to a more broader picture about your life at Hull York, what, were, what are some of the societies that you've joined or been part of since you've arrived at university? So currently I, I am in the softball and baseball, um, the softball and baseball society. Hmm. How is that like? Do you get to play a lot of sports? Is that, is that quite a filled experience? So we are part, we are part of Bucks, uh, which is the um, sort of organization that runs um, university sports here in England. And it's extremely entertaining uh, and extremely fulfilling to just uh, play in a team with a bunch of different people, taking a bunch of different degrees and sort of interacting with everybody. Um, it's for sort of all experience levels. So it's always nice to just meet new people and sort of laugh steam once in a while. And I think, especially being in med school, you're very stressed all the time. Um, you're put under a lot of pressure constantly and it's just really nice once in a while to go out and, you know, play different uh, or play softball and baseball. Mm. So that's a good uh, presentation. Perhaps um, towards the end of this interview, um, what is one of the craziest things which has happened to you since you've gotten to how you were met? <laughs> um, 
Um, so craziest thing that's happened since I got into Holyoke Medical School. I would say um, on the record, one of the one of the sort of best moments that I'd I'd um, experienced was at hospital. Um, I, I was always a bit concerned with um, my <laughs> a lot of, a lot of people might say this now that they watch this interview, but a lot of people have, or not a lot of people. I myself have um, been very critical about my um, ability to demonstrate my empathy and uh, sort of building up that relationship with the patient within like just a you know five to ten minute consultation. And I remember not that long ago, this patient said um, uh, that I that I was obviously that I was really nice throughout the consultation and, and that he really appreciated it. And that you know just talking to me was um, uh, extremely fun to do. And he and he wished that um, a lot of people also have had my manner and stuff like that. So I felt like that was extremely just just an extremely nice moment for me because I've been trying to work up to that point uh, for about a year now. Um, off the record, um, I passed out next to next to the uh, city wall, and um, I cried for my friend to call an ambulance. But they just called an Uber, and I had to go home. Um, I don't actually remember that firsthand, um, which is why I can't elaborate on it further. Uh, I am sure that people can infer what happened without me having to explicitly say um, <laughs> why I was why I was um, half half asleep on the side of the road. Mm, brilliant! No, that's that's a that's a crazy story. I'm sure <laughs> I, I'm I'm sure most people will have their theories after this. Let us know what you think happened to <laughs> Dongwook in the comments below. I'll happily hear your thoughts there. To end off this interview. Going to university can be overwhelming, and I guess there's always times where you might think, I could have done something a bit differently. Are there any of those things? And if you could go back in time, what, what advice would you give yourself? I'd definitely just join more societies um, because I always thought med school was, you know, all about you, you just have to sit at your desk for like 12 hours a day. Well, no, there are a lot of societies, and especially med school societies, um, I'm sure, at any university that you can join, such as we have the medics football uh, team, medics rugby team that you could easily join. So there's just, and a lot of different socks, such as the pediatric uh, medicine society, the orthopedic medicine society, cardiac medicine society. There's just a lot of different things to um, really sink your teeth into. And it's so important to... Just, just just go out there and do more stuff. Don't stay in your room, uh, especially at university. Staying in your room is, um, well, unless you're working, you, you need to work at some point, but staying in your room all day, every day for the entire year is a big no-no. You want to get out there, experience different things. Definitely. That's a very important piece of advice. I think exploring different societies, meeting new people is just such an important part of high school, of university. Thank you very much for coming onto this channel. I'm sure um, the viewers have really learned a lot from this interview. Like always, if you do enjoy these interviews and want more interviews like these, then make sure to like and subscribe. And let me know in the comments below what do you want to see or if you have any other questions for Life at Med School, let me know in the comments. Also, before we end off, if you do want to uh, check out our two books or you're applying to the US, also, if you are applying to the US and the UK, make sure to go check out the US College Guide and the UCAS Bible. These are two very good places to start off your UK application. Thanks for watching. Stay safe and I'll see you next one. Have a good one.